Speaking of rambling, in the news this week, uh, Jada Pinkett's been everywhere. Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, and at this point, we don't know if it's Jada Pinkett or Jada Pinkett Smith. I'm, I am thoroughly confused by everything going on with all this. Uh, I think, I think I've, Jada's been put through the ringer. There, people are just going in on her. But then I, I saw Tony Baker saying, I wish Jada, when people were saying, I wish Jada Pinkett would just shut up. Nobody cares. No, that's not true. Tony Baker said it. The, the, the algorithms, the clicks, and the views say otherwise. We do care. Now, I'm talking about it on my podcast, so I care. Uh, what, I, what I just, here's my thing. Being the entertainment business, uh, knowing there's always usually, there's a, uh, how can I how can I put this? There is a there's a reason people start spreading business about their their personal business about themselves. There's usually a reason. It's not just random. And the fact that she's got a book coming out, and you know she's opening up about her life in the book. Uh, some of the things she's saying I don't understand. Like. When she said Tupac had alopecia, and I'm going, no, he didn't. I, I Tupac, really look at Tupac. He had some of the bushiest eyebrows I've ever seen in my life. And I just, isn't alopecia, everything falls out, isn't it? I don't know if the eyebrows do, but I was like, even even that point, I go, what, what does that have to do with anything? It's so random. She brings up Tupac. She has the book coming out, and then Tupac's. One of the supposed killers, uh, he got arrested. There's there's so much going on from the mid to late 90s right now in the news. Uh, so one thing about Will, though, he just kind of he's kind of floats above all the drama. You never really think it's getting to him. The only time there I ever saw a crack in Will Smith was the Oscars. Uh, so... I just was like, that was the only time I saw a crack. And the fact that now Jada's like, they weren't really together. I was like, I always thought it was something. It was something about Chris Rock that set him off. It wasn't necessarily what he said. I thought it was something Chris must have did in the past. And now, now we find out, according to Jada, Chris asked her out at one point when her and Will was on a, a break, allegedly. So... That kind of went like, oh, okay. And I don't know how Jada spun at the will. She could have spun it in a weird way. But I think when I was thinking about when I do my podcast, I don't want to be that gossiping dude about rumors. And I don't want to be, you know, God knows I'm the last person to go. <laughs> I've been dragged. I, I, I don't know exactly what Will's going through, but I know what it's like to get dragged on social media. And what I've learned as somebody going through that's went through it, that had my ex just drag the shit out of me there for a little bit on social media. What I learned is nobody really cares. Like this, this, this is, this is as far as it goes. Like you get people talking about you on podcast, you get people making comments on social media, but it's, it doesn't translate to real life is what I've learned. So as far as like, Will and Jada, you know, who's ever talking about them on podcasts and everything, I guarantee if they saw them in person, they'd probably smile. They wouldn't tell Jada, shut up, nobody cares. They, they'd be very accommodating and polite and say, well, Will, uh, I learned when my divorce happened and I got dragged, it seemed like every couple of weeks, my ex was making a post about me. You know, you can really start to read stuff and read comments and think, oh my God, are people turning on me? That was the one thing that got me was when people was like, he's going to lose his black fan base. His whole, his whole life, his whole act was about, <laughs> was about being married to a black woman. And I'm like, dude, as a comedian, your act is your life. And that's whatever life you're going through at that point. And so of course, if I'm married to a black girl, I'm going to talk about it. If I was married to a Jewish girl, I would talk about it. A Canadian girl, I would talk about it. You talk about your kids. You talk about your family. That's what we do. 
So it's I it kills me when people are like, I ain't got nothing else to talk about. I got plenty to talk about. Trust me. The comedy uh, the comedy guns stay loaded. I'll put it that way. I ain't running out of bullets. Uh, uh so that was interesting to me because I went like there was like a, a couple weeks where I wasn't working. I was kind of locked in different hotel rooms. I was she was avoiding a process server. I was avoiding a process server. So all you got is your phone to call your friends, and and you have uh you have um the internet. So you start reading all the comments, and, you, and you, your mind can play tricks on you. I think that's why that was the closest I've ever been to like quote unquote solitary confinement. I was so freaked out <coughs> about getting served, and and I was just you know you hear horror stories, and you're like. And then I never forget I was in Baltimore and I got on stage my first night back after everything hit the fan with the divorce and somebody in the back goes, I love you little cheating ass. And I remember thinking, you don't know how bad I had to hear that right now. <laughs> and then when everybody's laughing, I go, oh, they don't care. I've learned that about social media, whether it be a joke that quote unquote offended people uh, normally the people that are offended by a joke you tell were people that were never going to come pay to see you anyways. 